Okay, um, we're going to start with the identity matrix and multiply it by an elementary matrix to get a new matrix. Then we're going to take that matrix and multiply it by another elementary matrix to get another new matrix, which we'll take and multiply by another elementary matrix to get another matrix. And we'll take that matrix, multiply it on the left by another elementary matrix to get this matrix. And then we'll take this matrix and multiply it by this. Actually, this isn't an elementary matrix. This is a product of two elementary matrices, but we'll shortcut it just a little bit. Um, and we multiply that to get this matrix. In the process, we're going to list the inverse of each elementary matrix. So the inverse of this matrix will be listed here. The inverse of this matrix will be listed here. The inverse of this matrix here, and so on. Now, listing the inverse of the elementary matrix is always quite easy. You just do the reverse operation, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to give you an overview. <clears throat> on this last one, this not being really an elementary matrix, it's a little more complicated to get the inverse matrix. If you broke this into two elementary operations, which I've kind of indicated here, you would get two elementary matrices, each of which would give you an inverse matrix. Um, now, Yeah, the other thing we list is the determinant of each elementary matrix. And the determinant of an elementary matrix is always really, really easy. Okay? Uh, in fact, uh, for any elementary matrix, the determinant is just the product of the diagonals. Um, but you have to, uh, have to do that uh, somewhat carefully to make sure you understand it. And the determinant of the inverse of the elementary matrix, well, we've established that the determinant of the inverse of a matrix is the reciprocal of the determinant of the matrix. Uh, and of course, you can always take the determinant of the inverse matrix here and verify it, that the determinant of the elementary matrix and the determinant of the inverse of the elementary matrix uh, are reciprocals. And in most cases, these determinants are one, so one is reciprocal of itself. But in this case, determinant is 3, so the determinant of the reciprocal is 1 third, determinant is 2, determinant of the recipro uh, reciprocal, I'm saying reciprocal, determinant of the inverse is the reciprocal, which is 1 half. Okay. <coughs> the matrix that we get at the end, and I didn't get this right the first time, I copied down one wrong number up here and screwed up everything, so you've got to be careful when you're doing this, it's a big clerical task. Uh, the determinant of this final matrix uh, is easily calculated by miners, and I won't go through the details. Well, here are the details of the calculation. We do get determinant 6, and if we multiply the elementary matrices, uh, the determinants of the elementary matrices that we multiplied by our original matrix, well, every time we multiply by an elementary matrix, we multiply the determinant of our matrix by the determinant of the elementary matrix. So the determinant of the identity matrix, of course, is just one. Uh, determinant of this is one. Determinant of this is one. So the determinant of this should be one, and we verify that it's so. Then we multiply by this elementary matrix, which has determinant three, um, and uh, the determinant of our result, we can verify, is three. Then we multiply by uh, a matrix that, um, well, we multiply by this matrix whose determinant is 1, we get this matrix, upper triangular, so its determinant is the product of the diagonal elements, and the determinant is 1. Uh, then by this matrix, which has determinant 1, um, that, I think I said determinant of this matrix is 1, it's, it's 3. Okay, multiply the uh, diagonal elements. Now in this matrix, we're no longer upper triangular, so the determinant takes just a little more work to evaluate. Uh, but the determinant is still 3, and when we get down here, as we verify by this calculation, the determinant is now multiplied by 2 because this elementary matrix, which isn't really an elementary matrix, still has determinant 2, and, and we double the determinant of the previous. Okay? So, that's what we have. Um, 
now let's look at the details, okay? The overview is there, okay? And remember that uh, well, nothing to remember at this point. Okay, that's where we're going to go and let's just say a little bit more about how we do these products and what all this might mean and why we bother keeping track of the inverse elementary matrices.